What's up, Explorers? I'm so happy to see you here. And for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel, Exploring Communication, where you're gonna get strategies to effectively communicate across cultures and for public speaking. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe so you can get more videos and ring that bell for every video on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday coming your way. All right, so today we're talking about emphatic stress and how to place emphasis in communication. Are you ready? To effectively communicate, it's important to be able to use emphasis to make a point, to convince someone of something. So this is true when you are speaking to a bunch of people, like an audience, or to one or two interlocutors. So emphatic stress helps us with that. But before we dive into what emphatic stress is, let's just not skip a beat here and let's talk about what stress is in the English language. English is a stress-timed language as opposed to a syllable-timed language such as Cantonese or Spanish. And there are other examples as well. But English is a stress-timed language. Stress-timed means that certain syllables that carry the weight and the meaning are given more importance than those syllables that are not that important and those that are weaker. Okay, and those will be glossed over more quickly as opposed to the syllables that are important. We will take more time saying those. For example, in this video, we're talking about another communication strategy. In this video, we're talking about another communication strategy. Video, talking, communication strategy. Those were my content words. Those are the words that I wanted to get across to you. So they're emphasized. Another example. Emphatic stress is an important part of communication. Emphatic stress is an important part of communication. Emphatic stress, important communication. Every sentence in English has sentence stress, meaning that certain words we are going to stress and emphasize over other words that we deem less important. So let's get into what these words are. We have content words, which carry meaning in the sentence, and these can be nouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs. And then we have function words, which are weaker in meaning. They do not carry meaning. And those can be articles, modals, conjunctions, prepositions that are weaker. So what's gonna happen in a sentence in English is that the stressed words that carry meaning, the content words, will be stressed and the function words will not be stressed. You'll just hear those in connected speech glossed over, meaning we don't really hear it as well. All right, so now that you have the background on English as a stress-timed language, emphatic stress will be easier to digest. So let's get into that now. Emphatic stress is a little bit different because here the speaker is consciously making an effort to point out certain words over other words. And you'll see what I mean in the examples that I'm gonna give you. And the reason the speaker does this, the reason for emphatic stress, is that they want the interlocutors and the audience to pay attention to certain words that may not be the content words or may not be the function words. But the point is, is that the speaker makes a choice here about what they want the audience to pay attention to. Let's have a look at some examples. Let's just start with the simple, basic question. Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? Without emphatic stress, my three content words there, the ones that I've emphasized, are documentary, intermittent, and fasting. Right? Those three words. But now, let's look at it where with emphatic stress, depending on which word I emphasize emphatically, will alter the meaning six different ways. I know, that's crazy, isn't it? Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? Have you seen it really? Because I don't know that I believe you. <laughs> really, have you actually seen it? Have. Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? I know that you've read about it, but have you seen the actual documentary itself? 
Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? As opposed to the old documentary, the one that was made three years ago, not the new one. Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? As opposed to, I don't know, intermittent snacking, which would be totally antithetical to fasting. But hey, have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? Everyone else has seen it, but have you? Have you seen the new documentary on intermittent fasting? as opposed to a three-day fast or a 30-day fast. So you see, we've altered the meaning of that question six different ways. That is an example of emphatic stress. So you can use this when you wanna point out certain words and alert the audience and the interlocutors to specific details. And the meaning changes based on where you place that emphatic stress. Where will you use emphatic stress next? It can be in a conversation, it can be in a public speaking engagement. This is when you want to alert your audience to key words, to words that you deem important, and to a message that you want to resonate with them. In a way, it does the heavy lifting for the audience so that they know which words to pay attention to and which ones to retain. What information can they keep with them Alrighty, Splinters, that's it for this video. I hope that you found it useful and I hope that you can use emphatic stress the next time you wanna persuade someone or share some pertinent information that you're just dying to get out. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please do. It means the world to me. And do like this video and share it with a friend. Comment below on other types of communication videos and strategies that you wanna see right here on Exploring Communication. I'll catch you next time. Happy exploring.